Welcome to the GHQ Crew Podcast, where we teach you to whack it so you can get that green jacket. <laughs> Masters week, baby. Masters week. This yeah. is probably the greatest week in golf. No question. It's There's not even a question. Four majors, mm-hmm. but this is the opener. Oh, yeah. And it's probably the most watched master, or most watched major, mm-hmm. most anticipated major, mm-hmm. most prestigious major, mm-hmm. and just the greatest week of golf. Yeah. You know what it is? What is it? It's magical. It's magical. It is magical. It is yeah. a magical week. People people don't, you, know, you, you get it at home for sure, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's just, it just draws you in. Yeah. It, it's a great week. It is a great week. And to support this great week, I think we got some swag on. No, we do have some swag, man. Show me the hat, Jay. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? For the love of 18, my good friend, our good friend, family member of the GHQ family here is uh, Matt yeah. Rodriguez. And he, 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 he developed this company. And um, we now have his hats here in the shop. He also has a website that's launching on Thursday, opening day of the Masters, is oh, what he yeah. told me. Isn't that cool? It's awesome. But, but you know, Matt has been coming in here for a really long time. Very long time. Um, his brother, JR, and his daddy, God mm-hmm. rest his soul. Yeah. Pano. Yes, sir. And that's who this company is for. Uh, it's it's a legacy for Pano. And Matt's heart behind this company is just incredible. So I encourage everybody, come pick up a hat. Get online. I mean, look at these things. Are you kidding me? He's got rope hats. He's got dad hats, hats. He's got flat bills. He's got uh, five panel, seven panel. He's got everything you would want in a hat. And this logo is so sick, especially on Masters Week. This yeah. little green logo. Are you kidding me? It's for the love of eighteen. Yeah. And go to his, go to his website. Support him if you can't stop by the shop on Thursday. They're launching on for the love of eighteen dot net, yes. and get on there and buy a hat because why not? I got something cool I want to share. Yeah. Um, Matt actually sent this to me. This is a surprise. You didn't know this was coming. Uh, he actually sent me something this morning. Okay. That I just think is so freaking cool. Now, he also sent us um, basically what the company's all about, mm-hmm. right? And just the heart behind it. And I can't impress upon you enough how cool it is that, dude, he just dove right in. Yeah. Like zero fear, just dove right in for his pop. Yeah. And I mean, dude, his dad, if people don't know, his daddy... He fought cancer valiant, valiantly, yeah. if I said that right. Yep. Um, 18 years. Yeah, man. 18 years. And I kid you not, dude, I saw Pano in some of his worst times. Yes, sir. You'd never know it. Never. Smile on his face. Smile on his face all the time. Super positive. And by the way, that's how you kick cancer's butt. Yeah. That's how you do it. And and Pano gave us the blueprint for that. Yeah. You know, just how to be a, an amazing person. He loved God. He loved his family. And he loved the people around him. Yes, sir. So this company is so cool. And it's uh it's just an amazing thing Matt's doing. But here, I'm gonna I'm gonna share what he said this morning. I just thought this was so freaking cool. Um he said, uh your first podcast says it all, basically, when you describe that not only are your employees family, but so are the customers. And he said, I have felt that from the very first time I walked in 10 years ago. Um, I appreciate you guys for not only being golf group gurus, but treating everyone like family. Yeah. And uh, Matt, you are... Definitely family. We'll do anything for you, brother. But congratulations on your company. And uh, everybody go buy a hat. Yeah. He's going to have some other stuff, too, that's super cool uh, that's that's coming down the pipeline that he was telling me about. But I can't say anything. You can't say anything. I can't know. say nothing. There's some cool stuff coming. And yeah. if you can't come in the shop, we got the full run of hats. If you can't come in the shop and buy a hat, get online Thursday morning 
launch of the masters launch of the hats online and yeah. purchase that link will be in the description go down there and give matt a supporting hand yeah and by the way our the hats are out now yeah they're available now and um what's really cool is you should get one because they're master's colors right they're master's colors for master's it's the perfect week. master's hat it's the perfect week it is the perfect week master's week it is the perfect week you know the Lord's risen. We're already past Easter. Mm -hmm. The Lord has already risen. Mm -hmm. And, and now he created we, Augusta. <laughs> Bingo. He created Augusta National. Yeah. It is God's golf course. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. And they even have a corner that's a man corner. Yeah. So I think that ties in perfect. Mm -hmm. And so it's Master's Week, Jared. Yes. What does your week look like? Well, first of all, I want to point out, too, I'm wearing this pink shirt. And you may wonder. You kind of looked at me funny. Yeah, I did. I did. Because the pink... And it's a big cat thing, but yeah, you you wanted me to have green for masters or you know green or yellow, whatever. I did the pink, yeah, because this is a tiger shirt. It's the yeah. only thing Nike did right was made the TW line sure. for golf, right? Um, but it's the tiger pink. This mm -hmm. is a TW pink for Azalea. That's okay. where I went with. That. I got you. You see where I'm going? I see where you're going. Okay. And you hoping Tiger wins? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, I know Tiger's going to win. It is Tiger's year. Yeah, it's Tiger's year. Uh, I was reading this morning, uh, Will Zalatoris actually got to play a practice round with him on Monday. Mm -hmm. And he said Big Cat out drove him. Yeah, he's already scared. And Will Zalatoris, just so you know, is a, a wee little man, but he hits it a mile. And he said Big Cat was out driving him. And he said Tiger looks really good this week. Mm -hmm. And so here's to Tiger winning the Masters, yep. a sixth green jacket. Yes. And... That rolls me into because there's a lot of controversy on in the, the professional golf industry right now between PGA Tour, Live Tour, these these two battling tours, which I wouldn't even say they're battling because Live Tour is more of a a college football, if you will. Like gather around, drink beer, watch them play some golf for some money. There's music constantly playing. PGA Tour is like this. It's really professional and like, don't throw your beers on the green. We're not playing music. Be quiet and let's just play golf. Sure. And so the Masters is the one unique tournament that allows live players and PGA Tour players into the tournament to play. And so I have a sneaking suspicion or a sneaking guess about who's going to win the Masters this week. Really? Yeah. Who, who, okay. I got to hear this one. John Rahm. Okay. He won it last year. Then he went to live for $350 million. I, I'm in on that. And he's playing really good. Rom's playing good now? Rom's playing really good. So full disclosure, and I don't want anybody at home to hate me for this, but this is just the truth. Yeah. This will be my first tournament to watch this year. I don't it's a, it's a thing with me. I don't watch a single golf tournament until this one. So like this is the first one of the year. You, 100%. you don't pay attention at nope. all. No Why clue. Is that? I don't know. The Masters just gets me going and I feel like it gets everybody going. You know what I mean? It does. It kind of like sets the tone of the year. Yeah. I mean, we got we, of course we have Valero and the Hawaii and Sony and the all those tournaments, right? But we did have the players Masters Cup. Masters Cup. We this did. Is, this is from Augusta, so you know. That is from Augusta. This is from Augusta. And we did have the players. And this is a great opportunity, too, because, you know, Scotty Scheffler is playing phenomenal golf right now. And he was the first one to go back to back at the players. Mm -hmm. He won the Arnie, I think, three times. Mm -hmm. Won the players this year. I think he kind of was tired. Uh, two weeks ago and kind of just was like, mm, I don't want to go into playoff and miss that five footer on purpose to go into a playoff. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want to go home. My wife's pregnant. We're about to have a kid. That makes sense. And I don't, I really don't want to win again right now. I yeah. need, I need to mentally prepare for the masters. Yeah. Two or 3 million bucks. I mean, at this point, I don't need it. Right. Yeah. And so I think Scotty Scheffler is also a great favorite to win. And I think he's the, the max like on betting. It's like, you don't, you don't win a lot if he wins. Oh, uh, so he's like plus 100 or something. Yeah, it's bad. Wow, that's like an old Tiger line. Right? 
What's the line on Tiger, I wonder? Connor, do we know? Connor, can you give us the line on Tiger? Okay. Stand by. Keep on going. All right. Well, we're going to get the line on Tiger, but Scotty Scheffler is probably the favorite to win uh, this week because he is playing phenomenal golf. And then I'm going to throw another one in there. Okay. Wyndham Clark. You're looking at me like you don't even. No offense, Wyndham. Never heard of you. <laughs> Wyndham Clark has finished second to Scotty three times this year. One of which was probably one of the most pain, painful putts ever. 18 at the players. He has a chance to tie it up to go into a playoff. It goes into the hole and back out of the hole to finish second to Amen. Scotty. Got to be better. Well, you know, I call that divine intervention. <laughs> yeah. Scotty's he's got a direct connect. He does. You know what I mean? He does. And I think I think Scotty, John Rahm, Wyndham Clark mm -hmm. this week, and then Hideki Matsuyama has been playing incredible golf. And shout out to Shrixon. He's playing Shrixon Wood and Irons. And he has a great chance this week because he won it in the past too. Wow. That's a that's kind of a I don't think so, Scooter. Pick. I, I, there's no way that guy's going to win. Tell you what. I'm re, I'm in on this. Tell you what. Whatever you're about to say. Hideki Matsuyama, yep. top 10 for 50. That's a done deal. Okay. Okay. That's a bet. And then I'll make you another bet. Let's go. Taiga beats every single one of the people you just said. For? 50 bucks. So it's going to be a it's going to be a hundred in my pocket. Yeah, maybe. I like Tiger. And the, don't don't see I can already feel the hate coming in right now because West Texas is a big cat fan. And I don't want y'all to think I don't want Tiger to win because if Tiger wins, I'll gladly pay the $50. And if Hideki doesn't go in the top 10, I'll gladly pay the another another $50. I want Big Cat to win. Just I think it's Scotty's year. Yeah. I think it's Scotty Scheffler's era right now. And that's a good question. Yeah. Right? That that poses a, a good question. I mean, does Scotty have the chops? Does he have the chops to be the next guy? So the week after the players, after he won, when he was in contention on Saturday, so he shot, I think he shot six under on uh, Thursday, shot even par on Friday, but then came way back on Saturday to get into contention. And we were having this conversation in the shop. Is Scotty another dominant player on the tour. I'm not going to say Tiger. Tiger was crazy. And what Tiger did for the game, I don't think anybody else will do for the game. But from the stance of winning tournaments, is Scotty another dominant player like Tiger was? And I think the answer to that is starting to look like yes. Maybe not completely yes yet, but it is heading in that direction. So are you prepared to say he's like a Phil? He's better than Phil. Better than Phil. Better than Phil. Okay, so if you ask Vegas, he's at plus 325, by far the best odds to win. Also interesting. Big Cat. Phil and Big Cat are both at plus 10,000. <laughs> I'm betting that tomorrow. So, okay, I'm not a, I'm not, not today. A, I'm not an odds guy, and I don't know anything about that. If I bet a dollar on Tiger and he wins, what happens? You win a thousand bucks. Yeah, I think that's what that means. It's worth a dollar bet. What about a hundred? So that's a hundred thousand. It'd be pretty good. I wouldn't be mad about it, right? I would. I think that's so. Phil gets to play too. That's right. Previous champion. Yeah, Phil's playing. I don't think Scotty is a Phil Mickelson. I think Scotty Scheffler is a Scotty Scheffler that's better than Phil Mickelson. And that's that's a bold statement, dude. You're talking about two guys. That combined have like, I think, close to two hundred wins, dude. Like, correct. And um, Connor, if you'll pull up Scotty Scheffler's wins um, since starting on the PGA Tour, this might surprise you. He's not been on there long, and he has won a whole bunch. But here's the reason I don't think I think he's better than Phil. Okay, who's he finishing second to? Who's Who's Scotty Scott. finishing second to? Phil always finished second to who? Tiger. Tiger. 
It's people finishing second to Scotty. Okay, but you just said a minute ago he finished second to who? You know, it doesn't matter. He oh gave boy. he gave that putt away. Okay. It was a five footer. And he had been making five footers for four weeks in a row. So you're saying he just wanted to leave early, get ready for the master. I think so. Makes sense. I think so. And I I'm not the only one. There's been people that came in the shop and said, I think he Whoa, yeah. I, I just misread it. And here's why. Scotty Scheffler, when he reads a putt, he gets behind it, aligns his golf ball, then goes to the other side of the hole and looks at the line from the other side. This one, he sat down, aligned his golf ball, got up behind it, and just putted it. He did not go through his putting routine. Hmm. I think he gave it away just because he was he was tired. Are you kidding me? Won the Arnie? Won the players? And was like, why am I even playing in this? The Houston Children's? <laughs> That's not a shot. Yeah, maybe. Like, why I mean, am I here? You know, but it but it also begs the question, like, is he just that good that he can just kind of halfway do it throughout the whole tournament and be right there with a five-footer to tie? To go into a playoff? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. How many tournaments has Scotty won? He has won 11 tournaments. All right, now, just for fun, okay. give me Phil and then give me Tiger. Combined. No, no, no. Just give me Phil first, then Tiger, and then we'll do the math. Okay, Scotty's won 11 tournaments. He, I think Tiger's like 80-something. 80 83. 83? Sam's is tied with Sna- Sam Sneed. Okay, and then Phil's what, 59? Who cares? Phil has won 45. 45. Okay, you're close. And Tiger, I think it's like 83. 83 is tied with Sam Snead. Okay, so Scotty's only got 72 to catch Tiger. Scotty Scheffler is five years into his. 82. I think what 82. would be really fun is if you looked at Tiger's first five. And you said it before, right? Like, we know Scotty's not Tiger, right? right. There's probably never going to be another Tiger. Um, just like there's probably never going to be another Jack. Right. But I think it also puts in perspective, right? Like there's a lot of people, you said a lot of people in West Texas love Tiger. Okay, that may be true, but I think there's a lot of people also that take that realistic mindset of Tiger's done. That's not this guy. You never give up on Tiger. Well, I get mad at him. Yeah. (laughs) When he withdraws with the flu, I'm like, what are you doing? He was thrown up behind a tree. MJ played with the flu. Come on, Tiger. You're better than MJ that. won a championship with the flu. You're right. MJ also didn't have a broken back, broken leg, broken ankle. Well, broken everything. Tiger Tiger won the, the U.S. Open with a with blown ACL, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So true. His knee was completely gone, and he walked one of the hardest courses to walk. And which, won. which he's doing this week. Correct. Again. Yeah. Augusta, which what the TV doesn't show you is it's incredibly hilly. Yeah. Undulated. Yeah. There's a there's a par three, number six, and they just recently started showing it uh, in its in its entirety on TV to where you can get a good idea of what these guys are facing. But the tee box is essentially level with the green, mm-hmm. right? The green's maybe you know plus four elevated something, right? Sure. But it's essentially a flat shot. What you don't see, or what you used to not be able to see, you can see it now, is You've got probably f- at least 50 feet yeah. of a drop-off. These guys go straight down a hill like this. They reach the bottom and then go straight back up the hill. And you don't that see green. that on TV. Well, because if you're watching from behind, <laughs> all you see is the shot to the green. Right. And if they do an aerial view, you can't, you can't really tell. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. But um, I saw it on TV, and I was like, oh, they did kind of show that. That's yeah. cool. Because what the other thing that on Saturday and Sunday especially, imagine this. I mean, this is what would make me nervous about being a tour player, right? Yeah. The crowd's down at the base of the hill, and there's thousands of them. Yeah. Right? Watching this ball fly over their head to the green. Yeah. They're insane. I would totally shank one right into him. Oh, it'd be like <laughs> <laughs> straight down the hill. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a cool story about that in the practice round. 
<clears throat> so I went there with my with my uncle, my mm-hmm. dad, and uh, my uncle Bobby, and then my cousin Lucas. We all went together, and um, were I, I posted up on six because you know how I don't like crowds, yeah, right. So I noticed six T was kind of quiet, quiet. There was nobody there. So I was front row, Joe, like the ropes literally up against my gut, mm-hmm. you know, and Rory McElroy. And by the way, I'll show you the walk later. I, I feel like I can do his walk pretty good. He's kind of got this little bounce walk. And then um, the other guy, what um, Justin Rose, I can show you his walk too. He's, he's like this swaggy pimp walk, right? Like he's, up with his, you know, his head's up like this and he's walking in. Can I interrupt your story? Yeah. Justin Rose, U.S. Open. I didn't want him to win. And he's like, he's got his golf ball on 18. It's up against the rough on the fringe. And he pulls out a three wood, chokes way down on it, gets above the ball, lifts the heel off the ground. Can I say Justin Rose made the most glorious little bump and run with a three wood to win the U.S. Open? Hmm. I love you, Justin Rose, but I don't love you. Justin Rose, Roy McIlroy came walking up on six. Yeah, I mean, and who was playing with him? Oh, um, Coocher. Cooch. Yeah. Now, to put some context into this, the guy that was in front of them, like I'm not kidding you, this dude that was playing, I, this guy has a 40-year-old leather bag, okay, <laughs> His irons look like they're straight out the pawn shop. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they were, but I know they had graphite shafts in them. Okay. I have no idea what this guy's name was. I did, however, look him up, and he played a good first round. I mean, he shot 74 or something. Is he an amateur? No. This guy was a pro. Past, cha- past champion? Don't know. Don't know. The guy literally looked like they went up to him and said, hey, would you like to play in the Masters? And he was like, sure. Where do I get clubs? That's this guy. Yeah. Well, if if you want, you can go down here to the pawn shop, and we'll sell you some clubs there. Yeah. 12, 15 bucks. And then goes and shoots a 74. I'm just saying, that's the guy that was in front of them. Hmm. Right? He's playing all by himself. I mean, he's that guy. I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, nobody wanted to play with this guy. He hits... One of the worst shots I've ever seen a professional hit. Um, hits it fat, just chunks it right into the left bunker. And everybody does what everybody does in practice rounds, and they kind of jab at him and tell him, hey, hit another one, hit another one. And he was like, oh, okay. And he hits another one up there about 15 feet. Pretty good shot. And then here comes this threesome. They walk up. and Justin Rose is just, what's up? And I'm sitting there listening to Rory and his caddy. Yeah. And they're debating between a seven and an eight iron. And Rory's just, I mean, he is stuck on eight. And his caddy's like, no, dude, not on this hole. You don't want that thing moving left. Hit the high cut with the seven, and it's it's perfect. And Rory's like, it's too much. And caddy's like, well, okay, here's the seven. And Roy hits this beautiful towering seven iron up in the air, and he's like, too much. And sure enough, it lands on the backside of the green, pins front left for the practice round, and I'm like, ooh, Roy knew it. (laughs) So we all tell Roy to hit another one. He hits it up there with an eight iron to about five feet. Oh. Don't worry, though. Uh, Cooch just hit one off the box. He hits it in the front bunk. And then Rose just swaggily gets up there and hits it to about 12, 15 feet. No big deal, right of the hole. Rory gets to the back of that green complex and puts the ball right into the hole for birdie. Cooch hits it out of the bunker, splashes it in for birdie. And then Justin Rose cans the big 12, 15 footer for birdie. All the pressure was on him. And just for good measure, Roy went ahead and tapped in the five footer. So Roy went birdie, birdie. Rose went birdie. Cooch, Cooch. went birdie. Out of the bunker. Out of the bunker. And I think that goes to show you, though, on those practice rounds, there's no pressure. They're just like, you yeah. know what? I, I'm dumb here. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. I'm just going to putt these things. 
Because under pressure, do you think Roy makes the the long one from the back of the green? You know, he probably overreads it or, you know, speed, you know, got to be careful. Don't right. want to give anything away here, right? But when you're playing loose, it's just like, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to hit it. Yeah. Sit there and watch them skip balls over 16. Like, I think that's what I'm getting getting to here. Like, yeah. I don't know that everybody appreciates how good those people really are, right? Sure. We've all seen the commercial, these guys are good, right? But no, no, no. You, you, you don't understand. Like, they hit shots. Like, if you go out and look on 16 where Tiger pitched it in and the Nike's hanging over the lip, remember this? Yeah. The Nike ball mm-hmm. is hanging over and then it falls in. If you look where he was, dude, you could give any amateur – you know those big green baskets that holds 350? Yeah. You can give them one of those, and they ain't making one. Yeah. Not from there. Not do, from there. Do they even get it five foot? Well, it kind of flattens out down there after it goes screaming down the hill. Sure, but Tiger knew to take it 90 degrees no, up. No, Clinton, you have to. No, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. knew to do that. Yeah. Every amateur, well, most amateurs aren't going to be like, well, I need to take that. 90 degrees above the hole so that when it starts going down the hill, it trickles directly. Oh, don't worry. And then breaks left Mm -hmm. into the hole. I think most amateurs would probably 10, 15 foot and just let it go down the hill and kind of nestle close. Tiger knew exactly what that ball was doing from the moment it started going down the hill. Oh, yeah. And, And the other thing that, you know, talking about amateurs on that shot, if you hit it straight, first of all, you're, you're probably going to end up in the, in the bunker or the water. Yeah. But say you actually hit a good little check spinner, right? That ball's not stopping. I mean, it's going to be 10 to 15 feet past the hole back up the hill. Yeah. And and that putt's pretty straight. You see a lot of guys hit it there on Sunday. Sure. That putt's pretty straight. But, dude, watching those guys, if you hit it on the front of that green and that pin's over there on the left, in the practice rounds, every one of them were practicing that. Yeah. That shot, that putt. Oh, the putt! Because if they, if you know, if you just barely miss it, you catch it a groove high, groove low, right? And it's a little short, little shy. You have to putt, Clinton. It's probably a good 30, 40 feet of break. Oh man, it's crazy, dude. Yeah, you've got to putt it up the side of the hill, basically, and then just let it trickle down. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's interesting. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good week, though. It's going to be a good week. Masters week is always a good week. And, you know, we get to enjoy, you know, he's got a Masters Cup there. Mm-hmm. We get to enjoy Masters Cup on Saturday. We get to to do the Masters spread. Um, That's so cool that y'all ordered that. Yeah, we're going to get the, the, the whole gambit. Yeah. The, all, Pimento cheese. Yeah. The pulled pork. Pulled pork. Yep. Yeah. The you cups, some chips. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we get the, it's the whole game. It was like 180 bucks. Really? And it feeds 12. That's amazing. And it comes with all the ev- masters everything. Wait a minute. Is David going to be here? David will be yeah, here. Yeah, it won't Saturday. feed 12. <laughs> Trust it's gonna, me. It's going to feed six of us. Yeah. Trust me. And we may have to order some Chick fil A after or something. Yeah. To, to make up the difference. Yeah, um, the, only, the only prayer you have is if David just doesn't like pimento cheese. Or pulled pork. No, the pulled pork's done. I can promise you. <laughs> he, he, he loves that. Yeah. So. That's going to be great. It's going to be a great Saturday. It's going to be a great week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And who do you got? Besides Tiger. In reality, who do you got? Clinton, that's hilarious. I mean, I, I don't think you realize how serious I'm no, being. I, I know you're Tiger. Being... I'm done. You're not even going to name anybody else. Nope. That's my pick. That's your pick. Tiger. And just to give Listen, you guys an if idea. If you held a gun to my head. Tiger. Okay. Let me ask it like this. Yeah. What's going to be the longest driver this week at Augusta? DJ. No, not like that. The longest club. Oh. Um, Big Cat's hitting QI-10. Probably going to be QI-10. DJ's hitting QI-10. Yeah, it's probably going to be QI-10. A lot of your... Uh, Roy? <laughs> Roy's hitting QI10. Yeah, it's it's going to be QI10. Core. 
the core head, right? Yeah. Spins a little more, a little faster ball speed, mm-hmm. and it goes a mile. Yeah. So QI10 is going to be the top performing driver this week 100%. at Augusta. 100%. Because there's some of those holes that if you don't hit it far enough, you can't get in position to score. Sure. And which kind of segues me into a man corner. Mm-hmm. Number 12, mm-hmm. par five, correct? No. 11. No. 13. Tens a par four straight down the hill. 11 yeah. is one of the hardest par fours on planet Earth. 12 is the par three. three. 13 is the par five. And then 14 is another par four. Yeah. The amen corner technically is 11, 12, 13. Correct. 11. The, it's, and then it's not so much the whole shape, right? Or the, the fairways. It's the greens in amen corner. Mm. Because I know 12, if you miss it anywhere short of the hole with spin, it's coming into the water. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead. 13, if you go for it on two and it's not coming in from a higher uh, a higher descent rate mm-hmm. and bounces anywhere off the green, you're dead. Yeah, but don't forget about 12 also. You can't miss deep there either. Yeah, the, the the green sits like this yeah. all the way around. You, you miss deep and you're in those bunkers. That that's probably bogey. Well, if you if you catch a chunk and run and it runs past the hole, you're in the water. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't moral of the story is get the right club in your hand and hit it. Commit to it and hit it. We saw this with Speeth a few years ago. I mean, a mighty choke. Yeah. That was a mighty choke. In fact, I've argued that that was probably the moment where Spieth's career took a big turn. And for the worse, for a little bit. And yeah. then, no, he's back on track a little bit more now. But I think that really shook him. I mean, as it would anybody, right? Absolutely. I mean, he made a freaking, what, 12? It was pretty rough. Yeah, I think he hit it in the water about seven or eight times. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. it was painful to watch. It was like, bro. Just just smash it in the back bunker. Like <laughs> yeah. get this over with, right? Yeah. Like, but but again, he's trying to hit a shot. I'm telling you right now, dude, standing on 12 is pretty cool because when you're set, when you're the T box is wide open. There's nothing there. Nothing. It's right? at the it's end just, of 11's fairway. Correct. It's yeah. just wide open. But what what people don't see again. They talk about it. They do a pretty good job of letting you know what's going on there. But dude, the wind swirls up there. Yeah. Uh, up above that green. So, you know, for those guys, it could be the difference between wedge and nine iron yeah. or nine and eight iron or eight and seven iron, right? Yeah. Like it could make that much of a difference. And just imagine you say, well, I'm right on the edge of the number. I'm going to just hit a hard eight. And you toe splash it just a pinch. Mm. Or you you heel bang it just a pinch. It's, You're dead. Yeah. You have to hit the perfect shot. Okay. So then you say, well, dang it, I should have hit the seven. What if that goes nuclear? Yeah. If you're it, dead. If it doesn't stop in the bunker, over the bunker. You're, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. You're dead. So it's a great hole. It short is a, hole. It is a short hole, but it's a great hole. But 13 is the one I want to talk about. Because if you don't hit, you have to hit a long drive to get in position to go for it in two. If you don't hit it long enough, you're laying up, and then that little wedge flop over the water mm. is scary. Because we've seen a many of players put too much juju on it, and it just zips right off the green into the water. Yeah, you remember... Um one of my favorite Masters winners because it, at the time, um, I was still playing a lot, and um, wedges were kind of my thing. Mm-hmm. And I watched Zach Johnson. Zach Johnson. You don't remember Zach Johnson? I know who Zach Johnson is. Okay. You just threw a curveball in you there. You don't remember the green jacket? I remember one? Zach Johnson's All green right. jacket. Well, I think this is right, and Connor can correct me if I'm wrong, but... I think it's four straight days he laid up, four straight days he hit it perfectly 
within range to make birdie. And I believe all four days he made birdie. Laying up. Yeah. Because he hit this little wedge shot that, I mean, he made me a believer after day four. I was like, I'm doing that. Yeah. And I went out and practiced that shot. And it's, it's kind of this low, but kind of piercing spinning shot. Sure. And it takes one hop and just, yeah. And it quits. He was masterful at that. Yeah. Masterful. Yeah. At the Masters. Masterful at the Masters. But the guys that do go for it in two, I, I remember, this is a year Tiger won early on, Chris DeMarco <laughs> was leading. And the reason he was leading that week is because he went for 13 and two. And two of the days made eagle. But it's risk reward, right? If and again, I go back to if you don't hit it high enough. So out here in West Texas, we like to hit these little trap shots that stay low. But if you take a three wood like that into a green, what's it do? Bounces and goes over. Yeah, you, you cannot hold a green. Well, this this hole, if you're taking three five wood, uh, two iron, mm-hmm. and you don't hit it high enough, you're dead. Because it yeah. doesn't hold the green. Yeah. It doesn't hold the green. So that's why I'm saying, what is the longest driver this week? If it's QI 10, those guys that hit it on 13 have to hit it long if they want to go for it in two. Especially, it's going to be interesting Saturday and Sunday. If you got one of these guys that's in contention going into A-man corner, and they get to 13 and they need a birdie, they need an eagle, mm. it's one of those you say, okay, am I going to go for this? Or am I going to lay up and take my risk at birdie? Or do I try to pump a driver down there and get on the green in two and try to make an eagle? You know, I think that's I think that's part of the just magic of the Masters. Yeah. Right? Like, they're going to get to 13, and it's go time. Yeah. And what's crazy about Sunday is typically, like, if you par 13 and par 15, you feel like you just lost at least two shots to the field. Sure. Right? So you see a lot of guys start to press on those holes. It's the make-or-break portion of the tournament. And it, and it, and it kind of segues into, like, 15, where I think that's a vastly harder shot. Yeah. Right? On the second shot. A green that doesn't hold well. But also a green that if you land it just short on the green complex, it's coming back to that water. Yeah. And the, the likelihood of it stopping is almost zero. Yeah. Right? Um, if you miss it left or right on that hole, it's a tough up and in, dude. Yeah. I mean, it is tough to get it up and in from there. And, you know, again, it's the risk reward, but you almost you see almost all of them reach in there, bust that driver and and Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive that was one of the big changes that they made to Augusta National, which was to back the 13T box up. To make it harder. Yeah, so it's it's back even further into those trees that, again, the TV doesn't really do it justice. You can see it a little bit as guys exit 12. Yeah. But they go way back there. So you're literally hitting through a tunnel – and you're trying to hit it to the corner and you're trying to draw it enough to where it comes off the hill. that that hill and, and and you know it frames beautifully yeah but but it also let's let's say this man one of the finest shots in masters history was on that hole do you know the shot here's a hint it's one of the guys we've already talked about Phil Mickelson, out of the pine straw. Yeah. Remember that? I think it was a five iron maybe. Stuck it. And he gets it on the pad out of the pine straw. Yeah. Dude, people don't realize how awesome how hard that it is shot was. To stop it. Well, not only to stop it, but you're coming out of pine straw, which to basically describe that, it's it's like hard pan meets sand meets snot snot and okay better comparison as you know right now the bermuda's starting to change out here 
we're, we're getting into Bermuda growing season, so it gets green and it's woohoo, yeah. it's gets plush and nice. But while Bermuda's dormant, you have that top layer that's almost dusty, mm-hmm. right? Like it's real loose. Yeah. And you try to hit a wedge shot off that, it's not easy. Multiply that by 10, and that's pine straw. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. I mean, you could see bones trying to more or less talk Phil out of that shot. Yeah. Lay it up. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like at the open, dude. He's not doing that. Yeah. That's what I love about Phil. Sure. Now, you can argue, you know, I don't want to go down this road, right? So, because so many times people argue greatness by character. Yeah, it's. I mean, come on, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, I, I'm not going to sit here and 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 judge Phil one way or the other. Nor would I. Nor am I going to judge Tiger on his, you know, personal. I, I could care less. Sure. What they do in their personal time. I'm talking about the golf course here. Yeah. And that was a phenomenal shot. It was a phenomenal shot. Now, it may not have been the best shot in Masters history, but certainly one of the best shots on 13. Absolutely. So that's that is a great segue. Yeah. Because you leave 13, 14, 15, you get to 16, the pins tucked down in that little down valley by the mm-hmm. water. Mm-hmm. It makes for a great Sunday shot oh. because those guys always play it just right of the hole knowing that it's going to trickle down. We've seen a lot of hole-in-ones on 16. Uh, we've also seen a lot of frustration on 16 because if you stay above the hole, it's Ugh. an impossible putt. Yeah. And so we segue into what do you think is the greatest shot in the history of the Masters? Oh, man. So let me say this first. I want to hear what everybody else has to say about that too. Get the comments going. I want to know what you think the the best shot in Masters history is. Here's mine. Yeah. But I love this. I love this debate because here's what happens, and here's what's going to happen on the comments, right? Somebody's going to say something that we didn't think of. It's like, oh, man, that was Should've good. That, one. Yeah. that was a good one. For me, it's Bubba Watson, and I hate to say that. The shot on 10 <sighs> in the playoff was the dumbest shot I've ever seen. And by the way, I've been down on 10 in that practice round. One of the cool things I got to see was where he hit that shot. Clinton, if you're right-handed, you're going backwards, brother. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible unless you're Bubba Watson. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. So let's 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 go back to even the Zurich Classic. Bubba Watson wins the Zurich Classic, I think 2012. The last hole of the Zerk Classic is 600 and something yards. Bubba Watson hits driver and then pulls out driver, and the commentary is like, what is he doing? Mm -hmm. He's like, he's taking driver off the deck. Well, that's not going to work because this hole does this. From the fairway, your your second shot is around a corner or over the gunch. Mm -hmm. Bubba takes driver at the grandstand straight down the fairway and then curves it 70 yards. Mm -hmm. It rolls up the fairway to like 15 foot. Bubba Watson did something very similar at Augusta. Yeah, with a wedge. With a wedge. You know, m- making it move 70 with the driver, we've all done that. Right. <laughs> not to win the Zurich Classic. Maybe but, not yeah. on purpose, but right. we've all done that, sure. right? Hooking a wedge 50 to 60 yards, n- no. Mm-mm. No, I'm not, I can't say I've ever done that. God, I forgot about the bubble Not shot. even on accident. But that shot there, I'm telling you, is one of the best. I mean, by the way. How do you curve a driver 70 yards off the deck? Turbulators. It was a, yeah, it was a pink, yeah, pink shaft. Bro, he had turbulators. He had turbulators, but he curved a wedge. Yeah. I out mean, of dude, the trees. You, you just don't know. And by the way, this is kind of a fun fact. So during the practice round, when we went down there and took a look at it, there was probably 15, 20 of us down there at the same time. Yeah. You know, uh, one guy goes down, the other, you know. So we're all down there looking, and we're we're all talking about like, oh my gosh, how did he make this shot? And obviously, with all of us standing down there, and then we all move on. And I look over, and I'm like, Ooh, we kind of made a mess of the pine straw there, Clinton. It's like they got Oompa Loompas or something hanging out at Augusta, like Oompa, Oompa. yeah, yeah, who messed up this pine, pine straw? You. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like they came out. Somebody did. When I walked back down that cart path, because I was going to go try to watch them hit uh, their drive off the 
off the box and I was trying to get back to the to the apex of that hill. Yeah. Um just to see what they were hitting, you know? And um I look over and that pine straw was perfect. They had people come out and fix it right away. Yeah. Where'd they come from? I don't know. Hmm. I'm convinced it was Oompa Loompas. They maybe have a secret crew of them that just... Because the place is pristine. Yeah. I mean, I've heard things like... I've heard things before like uh, that that's a real deal, right? Like they have people that do that. Yeah. But I, I don't know that to be true. I do know this to be true. Another fun little story. I was going to the restroom, and um, man, I just eaten one of those wonderful pimento cheese sandwiches, mm. and I drank probably four of these cups of their glorious tea or lemonade or combination Arnie Palmer. Right? Mm-hmm. And um, I go to the restroom, and I can't remember. I want to say it was off of fifteen, maybe somewhere over in there. Anyhow, this bathroom is glorious, and they have somebody at the bathroom that, you know, hello, sir, right when you walk in, it's like, yeah, it's kind of, hi, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but, dude, I'm not kidding you. There, There's not a stall. There's not a urinal that you can go up to that's not pristine. Hmm. They clean after every single person. Like, dude, people just don't know. Yeah. They don't know what this place is like. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. This guy, I'm sitting there talking to this guy while I'm waiting on my pop, right? And I'm like, man, even this job would be sweet, dude. He goes, it's it's a pretty cool gig, man. I don't really care to clean up people's stuff all the time, but at the same time, man, I'm working at Augusta. That doesn't nothing's better than that. I said, well, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen here? Here's what he tells me. He said, well, a few years ago, we had a thunderstorm blow through um, on Wednesday. And lightning struck this big tree up here, and I looked up, trees missing a limb, right? It fell on the bathroom and crushes the bathroom. Tea time started at 7, I believe, 7.30 the next day. That bathroom was fixed. Holy smoke. They redid the walls. They redid the roof. They redid it all. I mean, this thing smashed it. Yeah. Again. Oompa Loompas, or maybe they just have contractors that they can call and pay them a zillion dollars to come work all night and fix it. But it was ready to go the next day. There wasn't some, there wasn't a, yeah. That's you telling me they're doing that at the U.S. Open? No, no way. Come Not on. A chance. Only at Augusta. That's what makes it magical. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe it was magic. Maybe it was a fairy dust thing. I don't know. Maybe said, yeah. You, How do you do it? Only okay. they know. Yeah. Only they know. And I'm telling you. You walk through the gates. There's not a blade of grass out of place. It's the most perfect place in the world. And anybody that's going there for the first time, if they if they ask me, hey, have you been there? Yes. Is it just amazing? Yeah, I can't describe it to you. You just got to go. You just got to go. And there's not a reason not to go. Yeah. You have to go. If you get the opportunity. If you get the opportunity. You clear the schedules. You clear them. You just say yes. Listen, this is going to be controversial. But I'm going to say it. Even if there is, heaven forbid, a, a death in the family, you got to push the funeral back. You got to go. Sorry, Clinton. I mean, it just is what it is. Here's the other thing. I actually told Cody this. Yeah. He goes, dude, what if I got the opportunity? His wife, she may not want to be named. So his wife was pregnant with their second child. And he's like, what if I got a call to go to the Masters? What would I do? I was like, Cody, you got to go. He's like, yeah, but do you miss the birth of your kid or do you go to the Masters? And I was like, no, you you you, you call on your buddy. You go to the Masters. Yeah. I'll hold hands and tell her to push, and I'll 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 I'll, I'll help you there. If it if we if it comes down to that, I'm there for you, bro. You got to go to the Augusta. You, you got to go. You bring back an Augusta National <laughs> That's onesie. Right. That's Look right. what I got you, baby. Yeah. And mom, mama's going to be mad. No doubt about that. Other options. But when she goes to Augusta later on, when you take her to Augusta later, she's going to understand then. No. You fly her to Augusta and put her in the hospital in Augusta. That's a way better idea and less creepy. 
I'm out at. Yeah, that's. Then, I, then, I, then I, I don't want the buddy. Over. Yeah, yeah. So you fly her with you to Augusta and say, "Hey, just in case the baby comes, you're here, and I have a pass. I'll run over, watch the delivery, and run yeah. back to the." It's a great idea. Yeah, I didn't think of that. And that's how magical the Masters is. <laughs> You would do, they have hospitals for this kind of stuff, right? You would do literally anything yeah, man. to not miss it. And yeah. just getting the op- – I don't think maybe people understand. To even get the opportunity to go is nearly impossible. Yeah, and, you know, I heard something, and I don't know. You know how stuff like this is, but I've heard there's been, like, people that have been caught, like, scalping tickets or, like, you know – Illegally obtaining the tickets, right? Sure. Not only do the people that sold them get 86, but the people that bought them, you're out. Yeah. And zero Fs are given by Augusta. Never National. again. They don't care. Never again. You're gone. So so don't cheat. Just play the lotto and get in. Cool story. Martin Garcia, we got to play his little golf course on Sunday. Dude. And it was phenomenal. It was beautiful. beautiful. Um, Mr. Garcia, thank you so much for the opportunity. We get to go back in, in maybe about a month. And he said, if you thought it was good now, it's going to be even better once everything greens up. Um, but he's had uh, passes for, he said, I think 14 years. Wow. He's gone to the Masters every year. So how do you how do you get that deal? I don't know how that works. Interesting. But he said they've had passes for him and his wife for 14 years, and they've got to go every single year. And he said this was the first year that they gave those passes up to not go. And he said he's regretting it and he's trying to get them back. Really? Yeah. Could you imagine getting to go just every year? Wow. So is that the deal? Once you transfer them, that's it. I I think you would have to go through the lottery again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. I mean, dude, one of my, one of my favorite things, um, I didn't witness this, but my uncle did. He was there a couple years prior to us going in 13. But this was crazy, man. These guys, you know, Tiger comes out and everybody goes nuts, right? And these these guys started running to, you know, get to a good viewpoint. Yeah. Mm-mm. This guy in a green jacket, sir, stops him. We don't run at Augusta. Walk. We walk fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Women, I saw it over and over and over again. They left their chair there with their purse. Because you're at Augusta, nobody touches it. It's insane. Yeah, dude. That's I mean, insane. It's, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. So question. Augusta, everybody knows that video of coming into Augusta National, and it's coming down those tree-lined street, and you see the big white house. Where do do patrons park? Um, so there's there's multiple. That's like the players' entrance. Sure, yeah, right. And so there's multiple. Actually, I believe there's only there's only one gate that I remember, but it had, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but it had multiple gates. Yeah, you know that you go through sure. security or whatever. And then right outside that is the pro shop. It's not inside. Right. It's on the outside in this little gathering area. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's there's places all around the course that you can park across the street, so on and so forth. It's kind of like going to a stadium. Yeah. Right? There's there's people that allow you to 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 park at their place for twenty five bucks yeah, or sure. what have you. And um Dude, all kinds of crazy stuff that I saw on the practice rounds. I saw people, you know, on the on the side of the street in Augusta, uh, ten thousand dollars for Masters tickets. You know, like yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, I actually heard a, a really funny story one time. And again, I'm not going to divulge any names, but I know of a couple of guys that snuck in. Mm-hmm. Wait. Snuck in, but did they get caught? One of them did. The other one didn't. The other one did not. What happened to the one that got caught? They escorted him out. That's it? He's banned for life. Hmm. Took his info. He's banned for life. 
But the other one, he enjoyed a full Saturday or Sunday, whatever day it was, at the Masters. How do you even sneak in? Well, their story was, and again, you know, but the story was, I believe that they were walking around the perimeter just trying to find a loose end, right? And there was on the very back side of the course, as they described it, there was like a maintenance type area or something, mm-hmm. I guess. And they snuck in through there and nobody saw them. They just acted like they were part of the crew or, you know, just lost, right? That was going to be their story. We're just yeah. lost. Don't know where we're at. And then I guess when they saw one of them didn't have a badge. <laughs> yeah. Time to go. <laughs> Time to go. And the other one just kind of drifted yeah, into, the, just crowd got into the crowd and disappeared. Yeah. That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, but I don't think it's worth it. No, and and you know, it's one of those things. Uh I would never try that there. Mm-mm. Um pure luck if you made it all the way through. Yeah. I'll just say that. Sure. They've got it. They've got it locked down pretty good. Tight so ship. how that happened is so anomalous and just I, I, I it would never happen again. I'll promise that. Right. Yeah. That year they fixed whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, you think about that on a larger scale. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could have been a bad deal. Well, yeah. That could have been a real bad deal. So, um, but yeah, you know, you know how stories go, though. Absolutely. Could Whether be, it's true or not. Could be 30% true. Could be 80% true. Who knows? Yeah. Now, I've heard rumors, and you can correct me. So you got Augusta National, mm-hmm. you got Augusta Country or Champions Country Club, which is right next door, mm-hmm. which is where they usually play the first two rounds of the uh, women's amateur, Augusta National Women's Amateur. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of those two golf courses, there's not a lot to look at. No, in fact, uh, that was one of the shocking things to me. It's just a little bitty town. Yeah. And a it's little bit of airport where all the private jets fly into. Yeah, it's just a little bitty town. But I'll tell you one thing. The people that live there are brilliant. They get the heck out of their house and rent it out for the whole week. Why and not? And just make a killing, man. Yeah, why not? They probably get their entire mortgage for the year paid for. <laughs> oh, yeah, for players, from players? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, and patrons. No, bro, the players... <laughs> Forget about it, right? The players are, they're in cabins, dude. Yeah. 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 They're, 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 trust me, they're living the high life. Yeah. They're good to go. But everybody else, they're living the high life too, man. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not going to find a lot of people staying at the Holiday Inn Express. I'll tell you that. You know, they want the full experience, sure. right? So, I mean, they get a house and whatever. Yeah. Uh, right there by the golf course. I mean, mm. literally, you walk across the street and maybe another two or three mics, you know? Yeah. Two or three minutes, and you're there. Yeah. You know, bang, you're there. And that's what I always heard. It was it was Augusta National, then there's Champions Country Club right next door. But that's it. Yeah, that's it. Might be a Taco Bell. Ooh. I can't remember. Yeah. There's always a Taco There's Bell. a cool place in Atlanta. <laughs> How far is Atlanta from Augusta? About an hour. Okay. Hour and a half, maybe. Is that where y'all stayed? Yeah, we stayed there. Well, so if you're staying on the on the far north end of Ad- Atlanta, right? Probably about an hour, hour and a half. If you're, you know, middle, south side, Atlanta, ugh, it's a hike. Yeah. So I left, uh, I left Augusta early. And by the way, we don't have enough Michigan swag in here. Just so you know. We got to get a Michigan bag or something in here. We're the national champions. You are the national champions. Okay. I left Augusta National early. And even worse, I left Augusta National right before Tiger teed off. Why? Michigan was playing in the national championship in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome in basketball against Louisville. That's right. You went to the game. I did. And watched us get smoked like a ham. By Louisville. By Louisville. So, Trey Burke. How many national championships or big games have you been to with the Blues? Um, Okay, so in basketball, one. Okay. I went to the Natty. Mm -hmm. Uh, Football, 
Um, I went to Jerry's World and watched him play Florida. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Watched him beat Florida. Go blue. <laughs> uh, I may be forgetting one at Jerry's World, but I think that's the only one at Jerry's World. And then I uh, went to uh, uh, the big house and watched him play Penn State. Mm-hmm. Went to uh, Let me rephrase that. Watched him beat Penn State. <laughs> and then I uh, went to uh, – the big house and watched them destroy, destroy the Buckeyes. And then went to Houston. I went to Houston. Yeah. And watched them play the greatest football game that's ever been played. That was a good game. They beat Washington. They beat the crap out of Washington. Yeah. It's was beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I was sitting next to this kid and his dad. This is terrible. But I was sitting next to this kid and his dad, and I called this kid Future. The whole game. I still don't know his name. I wish I remembered his name, but what are you going to do? I had Adrian Peterson sitting next or behind us, right? We had we had Adam Schefter right there. We had Jalen Rose pretty close, right? Yeah. Like, I'm freaking out. But I got future next to him. Mm-hmm. This kid's getting recruited to play quarterback at Michigan. So I, I'm, I'm getting kind of chummy. You know, I want to sure. know this guy, right? So I'm calling him future the whole game. We we end up we, – we ice the game, right? We, we, we score a touchdown, and we all go nuts, right? And then we take the final knee and we all just lose it, right? And me and Future and his dad, I bring them all in and we're hugging and we're jumping and we're hugging. And then I went, oh, yeah, my wife's here. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad deal. Yeah. It was a bad deal. So uh, luckily, I don't think really uh, Nicole ha- uh, caught the gravity of that moment. Mm-hmm. She wasn't mad at me. Um but then I just turned around. I was bear hugging her, lifting her. But yeah, so it was just reaction. Yeah, you you went to the Washington game. Yeah, but then was there another game you got to go to, or was Washington the national? Yeah, Washington was the natty. But y'all beat somebody to get to the natty. Well, we beat Bama to get to the natty. You beat Bama to get to the natty. Yeah, we we beat Bama. I think a better story is you ended Saban's career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the better narrative. Sure. Big Big Blue, Go Blue, ended yeah. Nick Saban's career. One of the most legendary careers ever. Yeah, I mean, he and was awesome. He had an opportunity to retire with a national championship, <laughs> but they met the Wolverines mm-hmm. and lost, mm-hmm. which was another phenomenal game. Wonderful game. Didn't look good for us there for a minute. And I'll tell you this. I will absolutely, as a fan, take credit for that. Uh, no chance Michigan or Harbaugh is going to take credit for that. I'll tell you what really made Saban retire was NIL. Absolutely. You know, and it kind of segues back to the Masters in in this sense. There's really never a good reason to leave the Masters because let me tell you, that's the only game I've gone to of U of M's live that they lost. Yeah. And it was because it was Masters Week. That's right. Had you stayed, they would have won. Mm-hmm. And you would have had another natty to put on the, the shelf. That's correct. Yeah. It's Masters Week, folks. It's Masters Week. It's Masters Week. The greatest week in golf. Like I said, not a reason not to go. Not a reason. And you can't you can't leave early. Stay for the whole day. You got to stay for the whole thing. Stay for the whole thing. Um and we're excited. Jared gets to, he's leaving tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He's leaving tomorrow to head to the Masters. He gets to go to actual rounds this year, Thursday and Friday. Yeah, I'm and nervous. It's going to be a fun time because he's going to get to see live action from Big Cat. Yeah, but dude, there's this place, I guess, that you can go to. And it's like a mecca. It's like, it's on the course. But I guess it's a place like where you can go hang out or eat or whatever. <laughs> Looking at some of the names that have gone in. I mean, it's like $6,000 for the pass to go in this place. And you're going. Well, not because of me. No, right. Yeah, you have a pass, though. Callaway Golf gave me a pass, which was awesome. Yeah. She sent me the deal, and I'm like, what is this? Is this where I'm staying? And it's all fancy. And I'm like, oh, boy. You know me. Come on. (laughs) Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, but it's it. that'll be super cool. Um, I think I'll probably just hang out 
more on the course sure. than in that deal. Sure. You know? Um, Unless Michael Jordan's in there. If MJ's in there, yeah. But, you know, here's the thing. You can't take the cameras in. Oh. You know, no phones. No. So no problem. But I've got a plan. You do have a plan, and it might involve us bailing Jared out of jail. Mm -hmm. um, you might have to leave the Masters early. Yeah. But you got to hug MJ. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. And I'm not doing like a weird hug. Not the side hug. I'm coming in with the – I'm yeah. going to try mm, for the homie up, hug. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 hopefully, you know, one of two things is going to happen. MJ is going to punch me in the face. <laughs> uh, you get to wear a shiner around the course. Yeah, and I, well, I'll come back with a shiner. Yeah, and at that point, there's my proof. Yeah, I hugged MJ. Yeah. Met MJ. Mm -hmm. Can't take a picture. Nope. But I can. I he get, punched me. And get a shiner. Yeah. Or the, he's gonna say, "Who is this goofy forty-three-year-old bald guy that's trying to like, you know, what 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 is he doing?" That's when I get arrested. Yeah. And escorted out. And then you have your little certificate from your, your night in jail. I'm fine with that. It's proof. And we suggested a better option was to take Donnie's glasses. Yeah. The little Ray Bans that have a camera in them and just snap yeah. a little shot and Yeah. Yep. Which apparently I've got to, no. you know, correct that. He was busting my chops about the glasses. So we have a, a moment in the show we're gonna end it with where we're gonna correct some things from the previous episode. Yeah. And Jared, lead us off there. Well, I mean, I guess last week, uh, Donnie's busted my chops because I made a face. What face did you make? I went, when you said he looks good in him. Yeah. But what we were talking about there, Some if I remember, was that he looks good in the glasses. They're pretty big, right? They're like goggles. goggles. I believe is the word I use. Yep. And my face was like, I look like a clown in those. Donnie makes them work. Donnie, Donnie can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's a nerd. Dork. No, nerd. Is it nerd now? That was another correction. He's a nork. There we go, Connor. Not a knock, a nork. Nork. I love the guy. I think he just likes to bust my chops. Is I, what think I think so too. But yeah, and he, there's the correction. Donnie, your glasses are great. They're phenomenal. And, and I think they look phenomenal. And um it's it's not creepy at all that you can take pictures with them and and videotape with them. It's not weird. Uh in fact, that's very useful. That's a very useful tool. So long as people know that you're recording, right? You're Is that MJ. a prerequisite for that? Consent. Unless you're MJ. Consent. Yeah. Yes. Or unless you're MJ and you're at Augusta with glasses on. So funny story would happen. What what happens if they take the glasses? What do you tell Donnie? Well, I owe, I owe Donnie glasses, really, is all I can say. But here's the other problem with me taking his glasses. You wouldn't be able to see a thing. No. Mm -mm. No, I'd, I'd probably get escorted out for... You know, walking around, hitting walls and yeah. stuff. They're they're probably going to think something else is wrong with me, not vision. Right? He couldn't so. see anything. So it's Masters Week. We're excited. Jerry gets to go. He's leaving soon, and I'm excited. So let's just off the top of our head. I already know your answer. Jared's got Tiger winning. I got Scotty Scheffler. I like John Rom. I like I like such a chalk pick, man. It is, but I don't even I mean, care. Okay, the year is 2008. And you're like, who are you picking? Tiger. It's such a chalk pick. Yeah. Such a chalk pick. Yeah, bro. Yeah. The year is 2024. 11-time <laughs> winner. Back-to-back -back player champion. By the way, the only one to ever do that. Did Tiger do that? What? Back-to-back -back players. Nobody has done that. Okay, dude. It's the players. Who cares? Listen. Probably the greatest, greatest tournament that's not a major that should be a major of the year. Okay, it's, but it's not. But it should be. Okay. But nobody's ever done it. Okay. Well, has has Scotty won all four majors in a row? 
Not Has yet. Has Scotty won two Masters in a row? Not yet. Has Scotty won a U.S. Open with blown ACL? Not yet. Okay. He did. He did win. Um, he did win Arnie's with a broken neck. Broken neck. Yeah. He and had neck. that kinesiology tape on him. Dude couldn't even turn. <laughs> dude couldn't even turn his head. But I tell you what, he well, won. if he'd fake a five footer, don't you think he'd fake a neck injury? No. Okay. No. Nope. I got Scotty, and it is a chalk pick, but you give me any time in the 2000s, and you say, Tiger, it's a chalk pick. You know what? Let's go another 50 on Tiger and Scotty straight up. Done. Okay. Scotty Scheffler is going to beat Tiger this week. Yeah. Hideki Matsuyama is going to be in the top 10. Get out of here. And Tiger's not going to win the Masters. Okay. I got a curveball for you guys. Here it comes. My pick, always, Will Zalatoris, yeah. Clinton does. Clinton does. He's good every other tournament, and he's lights out every other <laughs> tournament. And the last tournament wasn't his best. So he's got that going for him. <laughs> You're banking and on odds here. Before yeah. his turn, or before his injury, <clears throat> he was on a tear. I don't, I don't know if y'all remember the uh, 2022 FedEx, but he was on a tear. The 2022 FedEx? Was that the year? Oh, um, what's his name? Oh, uh, Rory. Yeah, I mean, Rory won. But... <laughs> You're going up against the statistician over here. I know it's, it's he's kinda... Mr. Trend. You should see the guy in fantasy football. It's crazy. Yeah, he'll tell you to pick up Will Zalatoris as a cornerback. He's going to yep. come in and no, you know, no problem. He's going to uh, play. That's a, that's a bit of a stretch, but okay. Here's what we're going to do. Maybe Scotty Scheffler. He's got Will Zalatoris. I got Scotty Scheffler. You got Tiger. We got our bets going right. For those watching. Mm-hmm. For a dozen Pro V1s, or Ooh. better yet, a dozen golf ball of your choice, because you may not be a Titleist guy. Yeah. The person who comments the winner, and it, for the tiebreaker, you got to add how many under par they are, because may, somebody may choose the same winner. So, okay, they got to do the winner and their score. And their score. Okay. And the score will be the tiebreaker. Yeah. So the winner and the score, whoever chooses that right, come get a, a dozen golf balls of your choice on Monday. Yes. Yes. And so let's see what we got going. I want to see some comments. You know what? I'm going to do one better than that. Here we go. Because I'm going. You are going. So here's what I'm going to do. Hey. It ain't going to be the golf ball of your choice. You are going to get a dozen Master Pro V1 golf balls <laughs> right here. Yeah. That's what they're going to get. Okay. They're going to get a dozen of actual ma You know what I'm also going to do? Listen to this. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing in a flag. You're going to get a flag from the 2024 Masters. Yeah, and it I might even have Michael Jordan's autograph on it. He would never give you that flag. Just make sure you get the golf balls and the flag before you get kicked out. You would it, never give him that flag. I would never give him that flag. But let me tell you this. I'll give you a picture of that flag. <laughs> You'll get a picture of the flag. <laughs> I'll give you a Yeah. Okay, so but here. No, I'm going to get him a flag and some balls. Here, here it is. In the comments, leave the player you think is going to win and their score. The score is the tiebreaker. And if you if you are the closest and you win, you get a dozen Pro V1 golf balls from the Masters and a 2024 Masters flag. And we'll we'll deliver that to you next week. And so leave a comment and let us know. I got Scotty. He's got Tiger and Will Zalatoris with a broken back. That came out of nowhere. I hope Healed back. He's going to win, isn't he? Who? Will Zalatoris. Not a chance. Yeah. How can he win if Tiger's going to win? Okay, last little piece of side action. Whoever one of our picks is the highest gets 50 from the other two guys. Done. Yeah, that's done. Perfect. Dude, I can't believe you guys are going against Tiger at Augusta. <laughs> this is going to be the easiest money I've ever made. Okay, I don't even have to go against Tiger. If Will gets first and Tiger gets second, I still win. I want Tiger to get to 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 play very well, but let me tell you something, Connor. Win. Let me tell you something, Connor. And this is just the truth. If Will Zalatoris and Tiger are coming down the stretch as one and two, let me tell you what Will's going to do. He's going to crap himself. Yeah, you're going to see the biggest gag reflex you've ever seen because it's Big Cat. Although I don't know, you know, maybe maybe they're not as intimidated anymore. But yeah, I'm going to stick to my guns there. Will 
will absolutely choke down the stretch if him and Tiger Here it is. heads up. It is still a big cat effect because 2019 Masters, Tiger with Molinari. Is it Molinari? Who was in his group? The Italian dude, the little short Italian dude. Was Molinari. The, Molinari was leading the tournament with Tiger in the group. Gag reflex. Of course. He still has the Tiger effect yeah. on people. So if it is Will going down the 18th fairway and they're tied, it's a bogey for Will. Okay, here's a here's another last fun prediction. Okay. Do any of these three guys birdie the first hole? Oh, prop bets. Yeah. Do any of these guys birdie the first hole? I'm getting my mat hat. I think if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Tiger. Tiger's an out-the-gate birdie guy, too. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else. If he birdies the first hole, it's not like most of us. If we birdie the first hole, it's like, oh, God. It's going to be a horrible it's round. It's going to be a bad day. But Tiger birdies the first hole? It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a really good day. By the way, what's going to be the score of the winner? I think I got, that's a good question. I got 12. 12 under. Yeah. Wow. Connor? I'm going to say 11. Mm. You want to know why? Mm-mm. Yeah, well, yeah, I do. Tiger won 2019 at 12. It's 2024. Half of 24 is 12. It's a no-brainer. I'm going 14. What does that have to do with the price of peanuts? Well, Connor, first of all, we don't sell peanuts. And second of all, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense, but I like well, it. It doesn't make any sense, but it's 2024. There's a 4 and 14. I don't know. 14. That's what I'm feeling. It's provocative. Wait a minute. What did what did Tiger shoot when he broke the record? Right? For the most under par, whatever. Was it like 15 or 16? I don't remember. It was deep. It was a lot. Yeah. 16 maybe? Something like that. Okay. I'm going 14. 14. I got 12. What do you got, Connor? He 11. Said 11. 11. Perfect. Which is so wrong. But we got a lot of open bets, but the biggest one is y'all leave a comment so you yeah. can get some master swag and find out. It's Masters Week. We're excited about it. And this is gonna be a good one for y'all to watch. It's gonna go live tonight. 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 Yes. So y'all get to see it before the Masters. Usually we're Friday nights at nine o'clock, but it's going live tonight on Tuesday night. The only thing I'm bummed about What's that? can I tell you one thing before mm-hmm. we go? That I'm bummed about. What's that? We didn't have our master's bag. We didn't have a master's bag. It, it's coming in today, and guess what? It, it it's gone. It's gone. So usually we get some some season opener gear, uh, like Mizuno has some Azalea irons mm-hmm. gone. Um, Taylor made has a season opener master's bag gone, but there is some additional master swag coming in with that bag, head covers, etc. Okay. I got to throw this out there for everybody watching. There is six dozen Georgia Peach TaylorMade TP5 oh, golf balls out there. So cool. And the box is actually fuzzy like a Georgia Peach. Yeah. And they're Masters Edition golf balls. There's only six dozen, folks. And usually they're an online release only, but GHQ gets our hands on them. I got them. There's six dozen. And you should probably stop by and get a dozen golf balls mm-hmm. along with some Master swag that'll be in the shop today. Yep. So. Well, much love, fam. Yes. It's Masters Week. We have a busy week ahead getting prepared for the Masters Rush. And we love y'all. Again, for the love of 18.net, go pick up your hat with Matt. Um, and it's just going to be a... Matt's awesome. It's going to be a freaking exciting week. Yeah. And again, I can't stress, I mean, these match. Yeah. It's Masters Week. It's Masters it's, Week. It's Masters Week. It's ma- Wait, is my logo over here? It's over on... Yeah. I was doing this. It's on your left. It's over here. Yep. Look at this. It's a logo it on the left. It is a great, great, great story. And if you have an opportunity, email Matt from the website and just let him let him kind of tell the story because it's incredible. And for the love of 18.net, go check it out. And we will see you on the other side of the Masters. Yep. Have a great week. We love you. Bye, family. <laughs>